Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Mark picked up a very nice background for the day. <laughs> well, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there, and welcome to Grace Street. For those of you joining us online, welcome. Let us know you're watching. Put a note in the, uh, the feed there and just tell us hello. Uh, this coming Wednesday night, just some announcements to get uh, started with. We are continuing with our special series, The Shack. That'll start at 7 o'clock, and then uh, after we finish the study, we'll go into a time of prayer. So again, that's 7 o'clock right here at Grace Street. Join us for that. And then coming up right after that, because, uh, you know, two weeks goes by like that. <laughs> so June 3rd, we'll be having our next men's breakfast here at 9 a.m. We'll transform our space into a uh, place for fellowship and a meal. And then uh, following that, um, I got a little bit out of order here, but that's all right. I'm going to do this one first. June 14th, uh, this will be uh, Wednesday, so this will replace our Bible study night because uh, Mark and I participate in the uh, Freedom Festival uh, flag retirement ceremony. We have an opportunity to read off all the names of those who uh, have served and passed over this past year. So that is a humbling experience, and the list is much longer than you could ever imagine. We have a lot of men and women that have uh, blessed us by serving this country, and unfortunately some of those names include those who were not able to adjust and uh, subsequently have taken their own lives. Following that, then I think the next one, there we go, June 10th, the Saturday before, we'll be having our next race so we'll have the june races yesterday we had a, a good crowd here for the races and uh, had a lot of fun and we had a couple that had something to do but they drove all the way from iowa city father and son dropped off their cars and then went to uh, their other events so uh, definitely a way to participate even if you can't be here so we can uh, we do allow drop car drop offs and then uh, on our next slide we have a date for our next movie, we'll be showing Jesus Revolution on July 8th. Uh, the doors will open at 5.30, movie will be at 6. And as always, free concessions, hot dogs, drinks, brownie bites. Um, and the hot dogs, you know, they've expanded. We started off with one hot dog steamer that we had regular hot dogs in. Now we have another hot dog steamer that we have cheese dogs in. They're on Hawaiian buns. I don't know if you've ever had a Hawaiian bun with a hot dog, but it takes a hot dog from me you know, like down here to up here. So those are very, very good. And is that the last of my slides up there for announcements? I believe so, yes. Well, for those that are watching online, uh, also in the, the feed, we will be putting the link to the playlist for this morning's music. So please... Uh, worship with us after we the feed ends and worship with us with those songs that have been picked. Our call to worship this morning will be coming from Genesis 17, verses 15 and 16, but let's pray first. Father God, I don't know about everybody else, but Father, but I tend to get worked up during announcements in the morning. I want to get those out. I want to let everybody know all the great things that are going on here, Father, but the most important thing that we do, Father, is that we teach your word and that we come together in fellowship and learn about your word and learn about your love and how you care so deeply for us, Father. And on this special day, this Mother's Day, Father, we thank you for those mothers in our lives. And some of us may not have had the best of mothers, but I pray that if we didn't, we had a mother figure that stepped into our lives and became that, that bonus mom. So, Father, we just thank you for that. Father, as we prepare to hear this call to worship and, and more importantly, the message that you've given Pastor Mark this morning, just ask that you would open our hearts and our minds and our ears to hear this message, to let it resonate and let it be a, a lesson that we can take out into the world and use each and every day. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, coming from Genesis 17, 15 and 16, we have this. It says, Then God said to Abraham, regarding Sarah, your wife, her name will no longer be Sarah. From now on, her name will be Sarah. And I will bless her. 
and give you a son from her. Yes, I will bless her richly, and she will become the mother of many nations. Kings of nations will be among her descendants. Now, studying this passage, you know, we always just take it at face value. Sarah to Sarah, right? We take it at face value, but both names have a similar meaning, and that is princess. And it's thought that the change in the name or the spelling of the name simply reflects the difference in the dialect between Ur and Canaan, but it goes a little bit deeper than that. Because her birth name is believed to have been uh, meant to come from noble descent, whereas her new name, the name that God gave her, is fitting for someone who would become the mother of kings, so who ha would have uh, descendants who were of noble descent. This is a milestone in Sarah's calling, and it brought to attention God's promise. And it's, God promised Abraham that he would be the father of many nations, that his descendants would be greater than the sands on the shore, right? Well, here we have him telling Sarah, yes, I will bless her richly, and she will become the mother of many nations, indicating that it is through Abraham and Sarah that this will happen, not through any other uh, union. Well, Father, we just thank you that you made this promise to Abraham and Sarah. We thank you for uh, the fact that they were obedient to you once their son was born. And that beyond that, nations have been born. Nations have come up. And we are all descendants of this union. And more importantly, descendants of the very first that you created, both Adam and Eve. And Father, though this world contains many things in it that <coughs> trouble us, cause us grief, cause us pain, we can come and rest in you, Father that you will get us through each and every day. And that when our time is at an end here on this earth, we will come home to you. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good morning, church. How's everyone this morning? It's awesome to be here today. This is the day that God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hey, so this, this slide here I thought was really great. A man's work is from son to son, but a mother's work is never done. The Proverbs there. Women, can you, can you kind of relate to this a little bit? So when I saw that, I was going, man, that, that is just truth there. And uh, in honor of Mother's Day today, I thought I would, you know, kind of start things off with you, courtesy of the internet. I've got a few groaners for this morning to start with. So, <laughs> little Billy's mom was rubbing moisturizer cream on her face as Billy walked in. He goes, Mom, what are you doing? Well, I'm putting cold cream on my face, she replied. Well, why, Mommy? Well, to make my skin look young and beautiful. So... She begins wiping it off with the Kleenex, and then he goes, Gosh, Mom, you're giving up already? <laughs> I, I didn't write these. I, you know. So, uh, mothers to daughter advice. Cook a man a fish, and you'll feed him for a day. But teach a man to fish, and you'll get rid of him for the whole weekend. <laughs> so. All right, that one went a little better. So. A police recruit was asked during the exam, what would you do if you had to arrest your own mother? And he said, call for backup. <laughs> when a father is not happy, who cares? But when a mother is not happy, nobody is happy. <laughs> or as they say, happy wife, happy, wife. happy life. Oh, okay, everybody knows that one. <laughs> So I've got a few more from the internet, but that'll come later on. So by the way, happy Mother's Day for everybody out here. And I want to say that mothers play a critical role in the family. 
it's a powerful source for building that social interconnections and interactions and to be able to incorporate that into their whole lives. The mother-child relationship is vital for that healthy development of their children. And this has been proven year after year and, and they've had, I can't tell you how many studies, but boy, I, I started Googling this out here to see exactly you know, what this looked like. 32 million responses to mother-child relationship out there. And I went, wow, you know, that's, that's huge. Um, so it's very, very important. And increasingly since World War II, mothers are not only just caregivers within the family, they're also breadwinners for their family. When the fathers went off to war, the moms stepped up and provided for their families. And it's rare now in current times because of our financial situations and inflation and everything else that a family doesn't have two incomes just in order to make ends meet anymore. So that mother's role has really expanded. And so when I'm looking at this, I'm going, here's the truth in today's society and how life really proves out what was written in the Proverbs a couple thousand years ago. So you think about that, uh, it is true. So Mother's Day then is our day that we get to show your mom or the mother of your children um, how grateful you are that she is in your life. If your mother is no longer with you, then send up a prayer to God and thank him for caring for her. Either way, we shouldn't waste this opportunity today to step up and say thank you to all those who are mothers or have been a mother to you. So Barton Goldsmith, PhD, writes in, in Psychology Today, if it weren't for your mom, you wouldn't be breathing now. If nothing else, you should thank her for that. <laughs> Mothers are the emotional backbones of the family. They provide a holding place for everyone's feelings and do their best to keep us from being hurt. So he gave a, a uh, I think it was like eight points on why mothers are very important to the psychological well-being of the children. So the next one, and again, I didn't write these. So I'm just going to read them to you. Who would kiss your boo-boos <laughs> to make it better if she weren't around? Mothers have the magic touch and kiss to help heal our wounds, both physical and emotional. Truly, our mothers worked hard and made sacrifices so our lives would be better. There are a lot of people willing to do that, so make sure you know that you need to let her appreciate or that you appreciate all the things that she does. Mothers are forgiving, so forgive her in return. Perhaps nothing will be as valuable as a gift to you as forgiveness. Open your heart and drop your resentments. Now that's love. And then when you want to climb the tallest mountain, your mother will make your lunch for you. <laughs> She's the one who's willing to support your dreams when no one else will. And she will also remind you to wear clean <laughs> underwear, right? <laughs> Has anyone in here not heard that from their mother? <laughs> You're going out, now wear clean underwear. <laughs> Heaven forbid, you know. All right. So, the boundaries that a mom sets up help make you to be a better person. So the boundaries that she set around you, she wanted your best as you were growing up. You may have not liked some of the decisions and some of the boundaries she created for you, especially if you wanted to go out and party with your friends, but she did try to keep you out of trouble. Look at some of your friends without a mom who has cared as much and see how they turned out. And that is so true. You know, it, you know, at the time, mom, I want to go and do this. No, 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 that's really not a good idea. And then you find out, oops, guess what? Well, the whole household got busted by the police because, you know, somebody decided to bring in things they shouldn't have brought in. And you're sitting at home, bummed out because you didn't get that. But guess what? You also didn't get in trouble and get your name put in the police blotter. So uh, thank you, mom. Uh, a mother's ears and eyes hear and see everything. Now, uh, when we think about that, <laughs> it is amazing 
they have this sixth sense. Mm -hmm. They know when you're doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. And they call from the other end of the house. Mm -hmm. Or they're in the house and you're out in the yard and they still know you're doing something wrong. Now either it just means that they know you really, really well, or they have that sixth sense that you're not doing. They also have a computer-like memory for all the good and some of the bad that came your way. And it's nice to have someone with your mom that you can sit back and kind of reminisce as you're older, as you're an adult. But it's kind of funny then to be able to reminisce about those kind of things. So mom taught you to be a functioning uh, that was her job, and without that, making it through the modern world would be very, very hard. Okay? Your mom may have forced you to do your homework, but now you can see the fruits. You can see how important that was for your life. And one of them that I thought I, I'd throw in here is a mother's smile, when it's directed at you, makes your whole day a lot better. All she needs to know is that she has helped you feel and do your best that day. So let's say thank you today. So this says a lot about mothers and how important they are in our lives. Maybe you didn't have a great relationship with your mother or she isn't in your life anymore. And maybe there's a chance that possibly you could have some reconciliation with your mother. It's never too late. It's never too late. So now what I wanna do is kind of take a look at things from a biblical perspective when it comes to moms. So today I've chosen Sarah from Genesis 17, 15. Then God said to Abraham, regarding Sarai, your wife, her name will no longer be Sarai. From now on, it'll be Sarah, and I will bless her and give you a son from her. Yes, I will richly bless her, and she will become the mother of many nations. Kings of nations will be among her descendants. Now, wow, can you imagine First off, God is speaking to Abraham. Wouldn't it be great if God had speak to you direct, you know, just kind of one-to-one kind of thing, and sit down and have a nice chat with him. But to, to be told that, you know, your wife is now going to be the king of nations. And uh, the translations uh, for that are, uh, she is a princess of royalty, and now she is going to be the mother of nations. So they changed her name because her importance then is she's going to be a mother of nations. Not just a princess from one, but the mother of nations. So let's put it all in perspective. First of all, let's look at that verse 17. Then Abraham bowed to the ground, but he laughed to himself in disbelief. How could I be the father at age 100, he thought, and how can Sarah have a baby when she's 90 years old. Okay, so for all of you women here who've had children, okay, can you imagine giving birth at 90 years old? No. Yes? Oh, no? I mean, think about it. How would you feel now, as you are right now, and you're not 90 years old, you've got a ways to go yet, right? And then you're gonna be impregnated, and you're going, whoa, wait a minute. Ooh. Yeah, so. Sarah had been barren for all this time, and now she was to be with child. But see, she really, really, truly wanted and was, was asking God and petitioning God to have that child for years. So in Genesis 18, here is Sarah's response. Now, this is when these three men came, and they were in a tent out there, and these three men came to visit the tent, and it was the Lord amongst them. And he says, hey, where is Sarah, your wife, the visitors asked. Well, she's inside the tent, Abraham replied. Then one of them say, I will return about this time next year, and your wife Sarah will have a son. Now Sarah was listening to the confrontation from the tent. Abraham and Sarah were both very old by this time, and Sarah was long past the age of having children. So she laughs silently to herself. She says, how could a worn out woman like me enjoy such a pleasure? Especially when my master, my husband, is also so old. Well, can you imagine that? 
Then the Lord said to Abraham, Well, why did Sarah laugh? Why did she say, Can an old woman like me have a baby? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? I will return about this time next year, and Sarah will have a son. Sarah was afraid, so she done at it saying, I didn't laugh. But the Lord said, no, you did laugh. Now, I told you about that sixth sense kind of thing that mom had. and She knew what was going on the whole time. Can you imagine? She, if you read that verse in there, she laughed silently to herself. Didn't say it out loud. So God was standing outside. He knew her thoughts. And he says, no, no, no. No joking matter. You are going to have a son. Can you imagine what that would have been like? Wow. I'm sure you would have most likely had the same response. Are you kidding? No chance of that happening. You know, when you're sitting there listening in on it. So God was fulfilling his covenant with Abraham and Sarah. And so while this was all happening, they get finally get to bear his son, as told in Genesis 21. The Lord kept his word and did it for Sarah exactly what he had promised. She became pregnant and she gave birth to a son for Abraham in his old age. And this happened just as the time that God said it would. And Abraham named their son Isaac. And eight days after Isaac was born, Abraham circumcised him as God had commanded him. Now Abraham was 100 years old. When Isaac was born and Sarah declared God has brought me laughter all who hear about this will laugh with me who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse a baby yet I have given Abraham his son in his old age <coughs> and this had brought complete joy into Sarah's life here she had been waiting and waiting and, and wishing and hoping and praying for a baby and God delivered her prayer, answered her prayer, even after such a long time. So that brought complete joy into her life. And as she watched Isaac grow up, I'm sure he echoed many of the same traits that I mentioned earlier in here. Of all the different things that a mother did and how she was nurturing and brought him up properly and, and put in those boundaries, even though he didn't like them, mm -hmm. put in those boundaries to keep him safe. Well, now I'm sure you're hooked on the whole story. So God commands Abraham then as a test of faith to sacrifice that same son that they had waited so long for. So he wants to take Isaac out and use him as a sacrifice. And Abraham does as he is commanded, but God stops him. An angel shouts out from heaven saying, do not kill or touch or harm that boy. But your faith now has been proven to God for what you have done. And at that point in time, it fulfilled that covenant promise with God and Abraham. Kind of locked it into place. Abraham was tested and stayed true to God in the process. And I don't know about you, but I'd have a real problem going out and taking my son or daughter out to be sacrificed. So you're asking, what does it have to do with Mother's Day anyway? But really, I'm sure, as in any household out here, parents talk. Now, to be clear, the Bible doesn't tell us much about that talk, but you can probably imagine how it went. Well, what's your plans for the day, honey? Well, God told me to take Isaac out and sacrifice him on Mount Moriah. <laughs> yeah, well, this after Sarah and Abraham have waited practically their whole lives to have that child together. Now, this isn't that great way to start the day, really. But you see, they have this special relationship from God. And as I said, mothers have this sixth sense. So I'm sure Sarah had a clear vision of the power of God. She witnessed it personally within her own life. And I think faith was produced in that process of bearing that child. Faith that would take her to say that child would come back on. And I think a mother's faith is special as is the bond between a mother and a child. It creates that trust and it creates an influence in their lives. 
Faith develops through love. That nurturing bond of a mother is that foundation of that trust. And I think that is really, really important. So I wanted to put that up on screen. I think that that mother's faith that is, that is created when you have that bond, when that child is born, there's, there's a faith and a trust relationship that's built that does not go away with time or with circumstances. The stories and prayers you share with your children empower your children to dream, to trust God, and to believe in themselves. See, that's that foundational relationship I was talking about earlier, where as a mother, you're building that foundation for that child that will last a lifetime. It doesn't mean that that child can't stray away. They have their own free will, and sometimes they do. But that foundation is built through that trust and that love and that nurturing relationship. The power of a mother's love is seen every day in the way they interact with their children. And I know sometimes it's hard to believe that there's love in the shouting and in given circumstances. And I, you know, think about teenage years and tough love. Sometimes you got to do things and you got to say things to those children to give them that wake up call that they need to get their heads on straight. You know, but that's tough love. That love, see, still remains in the midst of the shouting, in the midst of those circumstances. That love is, still remains. That bond is still together. And in the end, I think you, as, as everyone else here, you would do almost anything for your child. Almost anything. So to delay, we want to celebrate that love. That enduring bond that is created in the womb and carried throughout life. We want to celebrate that relationship that goes to the very core of who we are. There's all kinds of mothers out there. There's stepmothers. There's step-up mothers. Those who, when the real mother can't be in the situation or is, has abandoned the child, you have someone that steps up to be that mom. That steps into their life to help them carry them through. Those who cared for you and cared for your children, let them know in a special way that they've been okay, that they have been such foundational in the lives of that child or in your own life. And I think that is really important for us to grasp a hold of today. We need to make sure that we show that love back to those mothers, to those stepmothers, to those step-up mothers who stepped up and stepped in to make sure we had that foundation, that enduring love. Okay, so I said there'd be more from the interview. So, Reader's Digest, okay? I went back to the epitome of all sources. Reader's Digest. This is entitled, What My Mother Taught Me. My mother taught me religion. When I spilled grape juice on the carpet, she instructed, you better pray that stain will come out of that carpet. <laughs> My mother taught me logic from her decisive words. Because I said so, that's why. My mother taught me foresight. Make sure you wear clean underwear in case you're in an accident. Right? My mother taught me irony. Keep laughing and I'll give you something to cry about. My mother taught me about stamina. You sit there till all that spinach is finished off your plate. Oh, that never happened. My mother taught me about weather. It looks like a tornado has swept through your room. My mother taught me about the circle of life. I brought you into this world and I can take you out. Oh, I see that. <laughs> you knew exactly what was coming. Uh, my mother taught me about behavior modification. Stop acting like your father. <laughs> Do as I say. Okay. My mother taught me about envy. There are millions of less fortunate children in this world who don't have a wonderful mom like you do. So I'm sure we've probably all heard some of those things. And there's got to be some kind of manual that you, that you ladies go through or something that becomes ingrained in our souls. Well, I'd like to close with a poem about a mother's love. A mother's love is something that no one can explain. 
It's made of deep devotion, of sacrifice and pain. It is endless and unselfish and enduring, come what may, for nothing can destroy it or take that love away. It is patient and forgiving when all others are forsaken. And it never fails or falters, even though the heart is breaking. It believes beyond believing when a world around condemns, and it glows with all the beauty of the rarest and brightest gems. It is far beyond defining. It defies all explanation. And yet it remains a secret, like the mysteries of creation. Many a splendid miracle man cannot understand, and another wondrous evidence of God's tender guidance. Helen Steiner writes. So today I want to make sure that we all make Mother's Day special for her, and it'll come back to you. There's something beyond words to express to the person who helped you walk and talk, who gave you your first puppy, who helped you with school, and gave you all the love that she possibly could. Show her you care by acknowledging her value in your and if you don't have your mom with you, take someone who's like a mother to you out for brunch. Show them that you care, that they care for you. Let us pray. Lord God, we come before you this morning with humble hearts and humble minds. We come before you hungry for your word and longing for a right relationship with you, Father God. On this day of celebrating your love, we lift up to those who have given us life, who have loved us and who have blessed us, and those who have taught us our mothers. May your blessing pour out upon the woman who gave us birth and to those beautiful, strong women of faith who have been mothers to us all along our journey. We praise you, O God, for your gift of motherly love, both gentle and fierce, both strong and humble, both kind and true where we have been so blessed. We give our grateful praise to you for having loving hands that have formed so hard working relationship in raising us and cared enough to correct us, blessed us in ways that we cannot fully have known as children. We call your forth your compassion upon every mother who has unknowingly caused pain and suffering. And so we lift up to you our mothers, so imperfect, and also so wounded by this world. We bless our mothers on this day, no matter what they have done or left undone. We do this because we believe in your healing and we believe in your love and we believe that you love every mother, good or bad. And we stand together with all mothers in solidarity for we are all in need of your grace. Where we have failed because we didn't know you better Help us to forgive ourselves as we forgive others. Where we have failed because we didn't know you better. We have seen your face in any woman who has been a mother to us. In her face we have seen your light. We have seen your love and we give thanks for where they have loved. Where they have kept your word and blessed us. We lift to you the prayer of every mother who has ever loved and lost. And that you stood by them in their time of loss. Lord, we thank you for being with us here today. And standing with each one of us each and every day of our lives. Whether we feel your presence or not. Lord, you are true and faithful to us. Even in our times of disobedience. Your love never fails or falters. Lord, bless us today as we go forth into the world. And let us know your presence. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. As I was listening to the message this morning, I many memories of my mom and my grandparents and certainly those women in my life that were like moms to me 
And, and I got to thinking about how they had that impact. So imagine, if you will, taking a small stone and just dropping it into a clear water. And what happens if you get this reverberation, these uh, ripples that come out from it? And I think about that as our moms. As Mark was teaching this morning, I'm thinking about the impact that those moms had and how they like that ripple of water that just keeps going out and out and out and affecting more and more area, more space. And that's what our moms have done for us. They, they've, they're like that ripple and they've had that everlasting effect on us. Even this day, you know, I, my mom had rheumatoid arthritis. She was a frail woman. But up until the time she died, she says, you know, you're not too old for me to put over my knee. And <laughs> you know, that reverberates back to a time when I was 18 where she went to smack my face because I was mouthing off and I put my hand up because I didn't want to get hit. I immediately put my hand down and said, go ahead, finish. <laughs> but think about that ripple. And now think about Jesus. He also is like that ripple of water. He touched the 12 and he touched 500 and he touched billions. And it all started with him, like, like that stone, like that focal point. And that's what this meal is reminding me of this morning. This is a ripple point for us where we're reminded that each time we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we do so until Christ returns. So each week we come together and we go through this tradition or this ritual, but there's so much meaning packed into it. And each week we can talk about all the different ways that it, that it affects us. But it started simply with Jesus saying, this is my body broken for you. Take and eat. And so he broke the bread and he gave it to the disciples. And then later in the meal he took the cup and after filling it said, this is the cup of the new covenant. My blood shed for your sins. And when he says your sins, he means everyone's. Because he's speaking to each of us. The body of Christ broken for you, take me. And the blood of Christ shed for you, take and drink. Father, we just thank you for the ripple effect that you have in our lives. That from the moment that you enter our lives, the lessons that we learn, the words that we repeat, the things that we experience all create a ripple and they go out and they can affect so many others, Father. Let us not leave that calm water like it is, Father. Let us be like that stone. Let us be those ripples that go out and affect those around us and then on into the future to people we may never ever meet. Father, we thank you for this special day and we thank you for the special message that uh, Pastor Mark gave us this morning about our moms. We pray this all in your son Jesus' name. mothers. <laughs> oh, goodness sake, I'm falling apart. Uh, is there any prayers that you would like for me to pray for anybody today? I've got Harold still on our mind. I'll be praying for him. And, uh, okay. Well, thank you, Jesus, for all the women you have chosen to become mothers. We praise and honor you this day for providing your kind your words of wisdom, knowledge, and strength to overcome many challenges mothers face in this life. As you have written in Colossians 3, 12, 14, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Lots of patience, that's for me. Mm -hmm. Bear with each other 
and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you, and over <coughs> all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. And let us be thankful for all you have done and are going to do in our lives, Lord Jesus. And Father God, we lift up Harold to you this morning. May the peace of God and the Holy Spirit be with him in these days of trial. Let the blood of Jesus wash over him and bless him in the days ahead. Be with Mark and Lori. Give them rest, comfort, and peace, knowing that you are in control of all things. Only you know the future, what it holds. And we praise and thank you, Jesus, for who you are and, and all the things that you help us through in this life. Watch over Mark as he travels for work. Be with Steve and I as we drive and Carrie and Jace as they fly to Texas this week and next week for my grandson Riley's graduation. Please give us a safety, please give us all safety everywhere we go and travel mercies for each new day. Bring us all back safely, for you are a great God, and we praise and honor you, Jesus. Father, I lift up Terry, Steve, and myself for healing of our shoulders. Give us comfort and less pain. Help us to be patient in our afflictions. Keep us, in, uh, keep us peaceful in our trials, and let the blood of Jesus wash us clean. And heal every bone and tendon and muscle according to your will for our lives. Thank you, Jesus. And Father, we continue to pray for our sons and grandchildren, Atlas's son, Demetrius, Monica's son, Matt, and my grandchildren, Riley, Bill, and Jason Colt. We continue to ask for favor upon them. Walk with them, talk with them, correct them in their thinking. Put Christian people in their paths that will bring them into a right relationship with you, Father God. When they stumble, bring them back to you. Do not let them fall away. Correct them and give their lives meaning, purpose, wisdom, and knowledge. Keep the evil one far from them. Keep them away from drugs and alcohol. Do not let them fall into the ways of the world, Lord Jesus. And we thank you for their lives, and we thank you for what you're doing in their lives each and every day. And we give you all the glory, honor, and praise, for you are such a great and gracious God. Thank you, Jesus, for everything. we close out this time of worship, uh, I want to make sure that we take that extra effort, make that extra effort today to bring honor to those who have been a mother to us. So I offer up today this prayer of rec reconciliation and forgiveness to help us restore relationships that may have been broken, to rekindle in our hearts that love that endures all time. Dear Lord, help us to do our very best each day to affirm one another, to remove the barriers that seem to hinder our relationships and keep us at distance from one another. Please give us your grace to heal our short tempers and our destructive habits. Help us to let go of the grudges we hold on so tightly and inspire us, dear God, to be re-gifters of your grace, your mercy, your blessings, and your love. Lord, lead us to be vessels and ambassadors of your forgiveness, of your healing love, and of your wisdom. Loving and gracious God, pour out your spirit upon us so that we will have the courage to reach out to those who have offended or hurt us. With your inspiration, Heavenly Father, may our efforts heal the wounds that hurt our families, hurt our churches, hurt our world. Lord, lead our hearts to worship you more fully each and every day. Bless us, dear God, that we may have hearts full of your peace. May we strive to be reconciled to you and to one another. Help us to always remember to live by the words that Jesus shared with his disciples when he taught them to pray, forgive our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. So as we go off into the world today and go out to celebrate this, our Mother's Day, Lord, help us to reconcile in our hearts any wrongs or anything that would keep us from having that right relationship with our mothers and also a right relationship with you. We praise you and thank you that you are a 
faithful God and true to your word. In Jesus' name we pray today. 